At Investors Observer, we think of the trading process as consisting of five steps. The first step is to identify potential trades, and the second is to decide whether to pull the trigger on a particular trade idea. The third step is explained in our videos how to place a cover call and how to place a diagonal. Let's look at steps four and five. A very high percentage of covered calls and diagonals are successful. So we will first be discussing step five, taking profits. Our video, Managing a Position That Goes Against Us, discusses what to do in those occasional situations where the trade does go against us. For profit taking, we need to know the target price that will gain us our full profits. For a stock, that's a hard decision, but not for these hedge trades. For a covered call, the target price that will maximize our profits is always the strike price of the option we sold. So that is the target exit price. Let's take as an example a covered call on Pent Air, symbol PNR. We bought 100 shares of PNR in May at just over $61 and sold an option at the same time with a 60 strike price expiring in three months, and that made our covered call. Now, whoa, wouldn't this lock in a loss to sell an option below the price we paid for this stock? If you're wondering about this, you are not alone, but no, it doesn't lock in a loss. We see the proof here. Yes, the 60 strike price is below the $61.38 we paid for the stock, but we also collected $3.75 for the option we sold and collected $0.34 cents in dividends to boot. So you see that our net investment is only $57.29 per share. The difference between that amount and the $60 strike price represents our target profit, which comes to $271. Now, let's take a look at some different price scenarios to see how the covered call stacks up to a stock-only position. We note that we bought the stock for $61.38, and we sold an option with a 60 strike, which is also our target exit price, as it always is with a call. Our cost was $57.29. Eventually, the stock-only position would win if the stock went up enough, but if the stock is at 60 or above at expiration, we would lose on the stock only position, but we would make our full profit of $271 on our covered call. Yep, the stock could drop $1.38 from what we paid for it, and we would still make our maximum profit of $2.71 instead of the loss we would have on the stock only position. We can see that there's a very large range over which our covered call will do better than owning the stock alone. Of the possible price outcomes shown here, 80% of them do better with a covered call than with a stock only position. In managing our profits, we definitely want to set alerts with our broker at the maximum profit level and at the break even level. Let's take a look at a chart of Pent Air where we are drawing lines where those alerts would be set. We see our same pent air covered call, and now we see where we got in and what the strike price was on our sold call. We see that our maximum profit are anywhere above the 60 price, our covered call strike price. We also want to set an alert with our broker at our break even price. For our covered call, the break even is always equal to how much net money we've put into the trade, which is what we paid for the stock initially that's what we've collected from our option sale. Now let's get a feel for the profits from diagonals. Just as in a covered call, our maximum profits are achieved if the underlying stock is at or above the strike price we sold. But our target exit price and break even are computed a little differently. Here's an example of an AT&T diagonal. With AT&T, we sold a November call option with a 43 strike against the January call option with the 38 strike that we bought. What's our target exit price for this diagonal trade? It's always the difference between the two strikes. So it is $5 for the AT&T diagonal because 43 minus 38 is five. So that is the price we want to sell our diagonal for to realize our full profit.
To figure our profit, we need to look at what we paid to get into the diagonal. And then we simply subtract what we paid to enter from our target price to exit. Of course, our percent gain will be the profit divided by what we paid to enter. Just as we did for the covered call, we can draw our max profit level on the charts of AT&T with our magic green line. We see here for our AT&T diagonal in the chart that we entered the stock at this price. There's where our maximum profits will be, and that's where our break-even would be. But we don't calculate the break-even the way we did for a call. We only spent $4.25 to buy the AT&T diagonal. For a call, our break-even is what we put into it. But we wouldn't be at a break-even if AT&T dropped to $4.25. It is true that we can't lose any more than the amount we paid to enter the diagonal. So if AT&T did drop from 43 to $4.25, as unthinkable as that is, we would have lost our $4.25, but no more. So how did we calculate where to draw that magenta line in the chart indicating the break-even stock price for our diagonal trades? If you are an Investors Observer Portfolio subscriber, we monitor that for you. If you are a self-directed investor who's a member of our TIG community, as we like to call our subscribers to the Trade Idea Generator, you can always look up the diagonal break-even price before you place your trade by downloading the report. But let me explain how you can calculate this for yourself. The stock price that represents a break-even level for your diagonal is always equal to the strike of the call you bought and what you paid for the diagonal. So, in our AT&T example here, the strike of the call that we bought was 38, and what we paid for the diagonal was $4.25. We add those two together, and we know that if the stock is at $42.25 or better, we can't lose any money. We discuss this at more length in our blog posts and in our members-only workshops that are held every two weeks. If the stock should drop below your break-even price, we discuss how to recover in our video, Managing Trades That Go Against You. Let's talk now briefly about when and why we would want to exit our positions early. The first common reason to exit a position early is to avoid earnings risk. Many investors, and those of us who are analysts here at Investors Observer, will frequently exit a position before earnings because we don't know how the stock will react to the earnings report. But one of the main reasons and the most frequent reasons that we're taking profits are when our stock price is well above the strike of the call that we sold. And that's something that we can do very frequently. Um, and when you take profits early, then your annualized returns are going to be greater um, than what you see as your target. Let's talk now about how to exit your position early. The first recommendation is, as soon as you find that your trade has been executed, that you've been filled on your covered call or filled on your diagonal, we recommend that you place a good till canceled order or sometimes called a resting order. This is an order that sits there at your broker, and uh, when someone is willing to give you the price that you're asking for, your order gets executed. I can tell you that it's a very satisfying thing to be going about your business and just get a little message pop up on your screen that you just got your maximum profit on a position where the option didn't expire for several weeks. For diagonals, when you do this, we recommend entering a good to cancel order that's at or very near the target exit price which we talked about how you compute that. That's the difference between the strike prices of the two options in the trade. For covered calls, target an early exit price. You can't usually get the full amount, as you often can for diagonals, so you may want to target an early exit price for maybe 75 or 90 percent of your target profit. And often that might be 25 or 50 cents or so less than the strike price. Mm -hmm.